Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me for the first time, Sean Wallace. Sean is the president and CEO, and he's the director of RN Resources. He has been uh, involved in all aspects of the mining industry, from the mineral exploration and project management to financing, mergers and acquisitions, and corporate development. He's had over 23 years of experience in that business, and uh, he has formerly been uh, uh, served in management teams at Asanco, Gold, uh, formerly Keegan Resources, uh, and uh, Chairman and Director of Stratton Resources, and of course Caden Resources, which is a name familiar to listeners of this show. Uh, indeed, it was my good fortune to meet up with um, Sean's partner, Ivan Bebek, in uh, January a couple of years ago, and I was able to uh, uh, to see that these guys really knew what they were talking about and recommended Caden in my newsletter, and uh, sooner than I ever expected, uh, turned a quick profit uh, in the sale of that. Uh, what I understand is evolving into a very significant gold deposit in Mexico to Agni Eagle. Eagle. Uh, so, uh, you know, to be successful in the junior sector, you really need to have a, a bunch of different skill sets. You can't just have the technical side. You can't just have the promotional or the uh, fundraising side. You need it all to come together. And I think Bebek and, uh, and, and Sean... Uh, that is Ivan Bebek and Sean Wallace all bring together the two partners uh, ideally and uh, are able to bring the technical expertise underneath their wings to make things happen. So I'm really pleased to have Sean with me. Thanks for joining me today, Sean. It's my pleasure, Jay. Thank you. Uh, really good to have you. I should tell our listeners that uh, your stock trades under the in Toronto under the symbol AUG, uh, selling at about eighty nine cents in U.S. money down here. You can buy it under GGTCF, I believe, in the symbol, the over the counter bulletin board. I mean, over the counter uh, in the United States. I don't know the trades in the bulletin board, but it's over the counter. You can buy it as I have down here uh, under that symbol. Thirty one point one million shares outstanding, I believe, given a market cap around U.S. twenty eight million. Dollars, uh, very modestly priced company. Of course, most companies are in this market. It's been a hor- horrific market, a very difficult market. But uh, somehow, Sean, you and your and Ivan have been able to do, along with your team, have been able to do very well. You know, um, when you and Ivan search for projects, what what can, what can you tell our listeners about what the hurdles are that you look for? What are you looking for when you decide uh, to go out and uh, and and buy into a project? Sure. Um, you know, Jay, the, the, it, there's a number of things we look for, and and at different times of um, different cycles and so forth, you know, we, we place more importance on one than the other. In particular, you know, with, with Oren, um, you know, while things were happening with Caden, uh, I had assembled a team, and, and I was off looking for a project already, and we spent about two years uh, really quietly looking for something uh, for Oren. And, you know, having been through numerous cycles, I, I knew that things, or I fe- felt rather, and, uh, and it turned out I was right, not always so, um, but uh, we felt, uh, Ivan and I, that, that things were going to continue to to, to be slow, and so we weren't in a big hurry. So I, I think you know we applied a fair bit of patience to this particular exercise this time, and we said you know if we hold out, we'll better projects will come, and and, and that is exactly what has happened. Um, but the, the the main criteria that we need to clear or hurdles uh, that projects have to clear prior to our wanting to feel positive about it um, would be that it have to be located in a jurisdiction um, that um, our technical team feels they can work in and operate, and that from all angles, uh, you know, the availability of, of skilled labor, local skilled labor, uh, um, and, and also on the permitting side to be able to get drill permits in a timely manner, and that's becoming obviously more of a, a challenge uh, uh, on a global uh, scale, if you will. Um, and for us, it had to have good grade or high grade uh, relative to the, to the project. So if, it was, if we're looking at an underground uh, gold project, you know, it would have to be plus six, seven grams. If it's going to be an open pit, it's got to be sort of two grams was sort of the, mm-hmm. the benchmark that we put gave our technical team this time. Um, it has to have a district scale look to it. And what, by that, what I mean is, it, it, you know, we wanted, we wanted to uh, get large um, land holdings that, where the prospectivity would indicate that, you know, there's the opportunity to discover uh, multiple deposits over, over that land package. Um, you know, it's been our experience and uh, it, that we deliver the most value for our shareholders as an exploration focus group um, by finding gold. And at the end of the day, um, and as we learned through our, our exercise with uh, um, Agnico that you uh, mentioned, uh, certainly they weren't interested in Caden because of how uh, 
you know, how great of engineers we are and how well we, you know, got the metallurgy set sorted out. Now, obviously, we had to check those boxes as we were going through. We had to make sure there were no fatal flaws. But frankly, they like to do that work themselves. And all mm -hmm. these, the majors, and I think there's more of a trend going this way, um, where the juniors should just be juniors. And, and you know, uh, and that, for us, as a gold exploration focus group, is our job is to find gold. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, again, it has to be in a good jurisdiction, have a, a large or district scale look, it has to have high grade, and, you know, certainly it has to be something that uh, is financeable. And, you know, those, right. these, are, these are things that move. <laughs> so these are moving targets always. Yeah, for you sure. Know, you, you know, you use your, your experience and your, your best judgment to, before you pull the trigger on one of these things and, because you have to live with these projects for, for a long time. Yeah, so you've selected this Committee Bay project in Nunavut. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about Nunavut. I mean, how yeah, you must be an easy, it must be a, a place your people felt they could work in, and it's uh, certainly politically safe jurisdiction, I would think. But uh, talk to us a little bit about Nunavut and and then the project, and why did you des, uh, decide on on Committee Bay? Well, the Committee Bay project. Um, I guess there was one other aspect I didn't mention too, and we have to be able to get it to make a deal on the project that we found palatable. But I think that goes sure. close. But you know, in particular, um, uh, the Committee Bay project um, was it was a project that had had a hundred million dollars spent on it. Um, wow. Uh, a lot of that in infrastructure costs, but a lot of exploration costs. They had tied up a 300-kilometer uh, long belt, so that gave us that district-scale look that we're talking about. Um, you look at, you know, there's only 60 holes drilled outside of the uh, the Three Bluffs deposit, which is the deposit that uh, our, our joint venture partner, North Country Gold, has sort of outlined. Uh, those 60 holes came back with some fantastic results that had never been followed up on. So, again, we believe that there are other deposits uh, that remain to be discovered there. So this is an exercise of us going and taking a project where, you know, in these bad times, the junior, for whatever reason, was, found themselves stuck. And we're not going to go get them unstuck by bringing in our, our mind-building expertise. That's not what's happening here. We believe that this is a purely an exploration project at this time, um, and that's what we're going to go do. We're going to go explore it. Um, we're very comfortable with Nunavut uh, from a lot of perspectives. I mean, in, in Canada... Um, you know, uh, First Nations or uh, Inuit issues, as it, as it is up here, that you know th those can be contentious in this area. That's not the case. Um, it's it's a very stable uh, jurisdiction from that perspective, say compared to some like British Columbia or, or other places in Canada. Um, you know, it uh, they have a good mineral tenure system, like you find all, all the way through Canada. So we certainly felt that we could work up there. Obviously, you know, and the elephant in the room whenever we're talking about this project is the remote nature of the project. And right, um, so that is the thing that we have to contend with. There is no perfect project, um, so there's always something that you have to try and overcome. And in this case, remote uh, equals you know expensive, frankly. And and so the big challenge. Is is uh, is to be able to find a way to keep those costs down, and so we've been working very hard at, at finding ways to do that as we go into our field season here, and I think that you know we've been able to to, to really get get that under control. No, a I big mean, part of like the... any sorry. No, go ahead. No, like anything, uh, you know the exec you know the. the your execution is based on how good your plan is. So we spent a lot of time putting uh, thought into the plan, working with the people at North Country who have a great deal of experience up there, reaching out to within our own team for experience in the North and to other people. Um, you know, for my year with Hunter Dickinson, we did a lot of work up uh, in, in northern Canada. So, you know, I have a lot of contacts who have a great deal of experience up there. So, you know, certainly we've been drawing on all that. Yeah, and you mentioned that something like a hundred million dollars has been spent up there. Uh, the you're not alone up there. I, I should mention, I believe that Agni Eagle, Eagle has a project they're moving uh, towards production up there. A very maybe they're starting production about now. Is that right? That's correct. And even more exciting is that uh, north of that project, um, they've made a, a new discovery, and they're really sort of uh, going uh, going forward on this on this new discovery. And the interesting thing is, uh, you know, it's only about 60 kilometers from the southern part of our project. So, you know, in, in Arctic terms, that's just, right, you know, right next door. Um, uh -huh. But it's not right next door, obviously, There's a, but it is, is close. Um, and the types of widths and grades and, and resources that are proving up there are very similar to what we're seeing, what we've seen and, we're, and we expect to continue to see on our project. So, you know, that gives us a lot of, uh, of uh, outside confirmation, if you will, that other people... And in my opinion, one of the more astute majors is 
um, you know, working away and, and happy to have the sort of results that we're hoping to have and, and you know, for what that's worth. Yeah, give, a, give our listeners a little idea. What sort of grades have you seen and how close to the surface? What, what is the size of the target that you're looking at? Uh, you have a lot of drill targets set up. Are you drilling now, and, and when might we see some results? Well, we're preparing for drilling now. Um, again, there's a project that has sort of sat idle for a little bit, so there was some work to be done in terms of getting things ready for, for a summer program. Mm-hmm. And so this really, um, the, this, the, the type of deposit that you see outlined there is about a million ounces of about eight grams, mm-hmm. um, and which, which is not big enough on its own, if you will, to attract any real interest. Sure. But it's wide open, and it's right from surface. And i got to give credit to the North Country guys. You know, when they made the discoveries, the, the several discoveries they've made along this trend, it was all done on the very limited amount of outcropping that exists. And so we're going to take a sort of subterranean uh, uh, approach, if you will, and, and follow up that using, you know, technologies, uh, um, uh, geophysics, and uh, and some sort of cheaper uh, drilling um uh, opportunities, if you will, using uh, uh, rab drills that only drill down about a hundred meters. But if you know, when you do a post mortem on the work that has been done to date, um, all the discoveries North Country made with a diamond drill, which is the, the most expensive way that you can drill, um, uh, it could have been made with a wrap. Now, obviously, you're not going to get measured resources doing it this way. But frankly, as I pointed out, that's not our goal here. Our goal here is to find new deposits, and when we feel good that that's happening, then we can drag the diamond uh, rig out and pay, you know, three to four times per meter the drilling costs that you pay when you're, when you're prospecting. It makes no sense to spend the kind of money prospecting that you have to spend to utilize a, a diamond drill. You know, I understand that very well. Well, my engineer is telling me we only have a minute or so left here. What, what should uh, listeners be watching for, Sean, um, in the near term? What, what sort of factors might... Uh, might really drive uh, interest in the in the company. Uh, let's say over the next several months. Sure, I think the things you can expect from us is a is a, is a measured, systematic approach to uh, uncovering the value of this district that we we've, we've acquired. Um, you know, we're fully financed to acquire our fifty acquire our fifty one percent interest here. So you know, there's no immediate need for financing. Um, I can tell you our acquisition our acquisition team is is working very hard at making our second acquisition. So we're not uh-huh. done. Um, this is a company that is going to have two or more extremely high quality district scale opportunities in it and and that's that is our goal well that's really exciting especially if you believe as I do that we're nearing the bottom and a turn in the gold market I think you want to be ready and you guys look like you've done your homework uh, again folks these guys have been very successful uh, Mr. Bebeck and uh, Sean Wallace, uh, their team has. So keep an eye on r and resources, and I hope to talk to you again sometime in the near future, Sean, uh, for an update, and maybe uh, you'll have some more uh, progress to pass along to our listeners at that time. We will, and it would be my pleasure to do so. 